On the Radio is brought to you by Zurich Insurance, the perfect place to catch up with all things Melbourne. If you enjoy this content and want more inside access from the team, make sure you visit the club website. Lily Mithin's been good enough to pick up the phone and have a chat to me, Melbourne Footy Club star. Welcome to you, Lily. Great to have you on the program. Thank you, Dwayne. Very nice introductory. It's, uh, yeah, good to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, you're a local... You're a, you're a local uh, Geelong girl, even though you're a Richmond fan as a kid. You did break for the Tigers, didn't you? I did. Yeah, Dad sucked me in. Um, as you would know, Dad's an avid Richmond supporter. and he, uh, he, So I had a long, many years of uh, childhood pain, but then thankfully they've uh, come good in the last couple of years. But um, yeah, grew up a Tiger, even though uh, it was the uncommon thing to do being a Geelong girl. <laughs> he didn't try and turn you into a jockey? Oh, he, I think he would have liked it to some extent. I would have been a perfect little size for a jockey, but I, um, I've got no idea about horse, horse craft. I uh, used to look at them out my bedroom window, but um, that was sort of as close as I used to get. <laughs> and I think you're a richo. Were you a big Matthew Richardson fan? Is that uh, who inspired you to become a footballer? I used to, um, I used to tell people that I'd uh, play with or against Matthew Richardson. So I, I never thought that that was uh, any what likely, but thankfully the AFLW came along and um, I could play at the elite level, but massive Richo supporter. That was my favourite thing, to jump in the car and head up the highway to watch the Tigers on a Saturday afternoon at the G and just scream Richo's name. So, um, I, um, yeah, I loved Richo. He's just a... Uh, amazing footballer um, when he used to play and yeah he was a massive reason as to why I fell in love with the game and um, yeah thankfully dad Anthony Mithin was on the board and I was often in the room so got to know him a little bit as a kid and I just thought he was the coolest man alive. He is cool anyway I mean he's cool off the footy field and uh, universally loved by everybody so I can see why people will gravitate towards him whether they're Richmond fans or not. Now, I'm lucky because I've got you on my program. (laughs) (laughs) I'm glad you said that, not me, Lily. (laughs) Uh, It's just the truth, isn't it? No no comment. Um, I'm refusing to answer that question just in case it gets back to him. Um, I'm lucky to have you on my program, even though you've drawn, drawn the short straw. They've put you up after your first loss of the year. I know. It was a uh, yeah, funny funny trip to Adelaide. We've got an interesting relationship with the Crows. We've um, been head-to-head many times in, I guess, the last six years of the AFLW competition, and uh, they've been too good the last couple of occasions. Um, the first time we played over in Adelaide was the prelim last year at Adelaide Oval, and they um, comfortably beat us, which was disappointing, and we're hoping to head over there to get some redemption, but Unfortunately, they were too big and strong and outplayed us on the day. So it wasn't um, the most ideal Saturday afternoon in a hot sort of 31 degrees at Norwood Oval, but um, definitely lots of learnings to take out of it, as all good football media trained people say, that there's learnings to come out of losses. And um, But it was definitely one of those days. We just sort of got outplayed and didn't get our game style going. But um, looking forward to another good opportunity to put the game style in practice and play Gito, uh, sorry, the Gold Coast Suns this weekend. Yeah, it's at uh, Casey Field for those people unaware. Sunday, this coming Sunday, 5-10 starts. So if you want to get it's along actually, and um, watch the Melbourne... It's actually this footy- game. In, this, it? in these weird COVID times, we've just had a fixture change and it's uh, now a 7-10 game at Casey Field Saturday night. So play under lights and get down, um, defence. It's a Saturday night thriller at Casey. All right, I'm glad for the breaking news. Is that better for you, night game, as opposed to, well, 5.10 would have will still have been fairly hot if it's a hot Melbourne day like we've been getting for the past week. Is a night game better for you? I really like playing night games at Casey. It's always a good atmosphere, and, um, yeah, night games are probably a little bit easier at the moment given how hot the weather's been, but um, doesn't doesn't really bother me, but I do think night games do create a bit more atmosphere and always a bit of fun, and then... You have the added bonus that hopefully the cool breezes come in a little bit and it's uh, the playing conditions are slightly more comfortable. Daniel Harford's opened up the when should you play summer or winter can of worms again. Have you got a thought on where you think the, the AFLW season is better placed uh, in the middle of summer like it is now so you get clear air and it's the only footy on or in the winter as a, as a side-by-side sport with the AFL? 
It is a tricky one. I see pros and cons to both um, sort of time frames. I think in the summer, the spectacle can be a little bit better given that it's drier and you're not playing in sort of muddy mug, um, ground where conditions can sort of make it um, harder to execute skills, whether it be rain and wind and um, playing in the mud. So I do like the summer component to our game creates probably a faster game, um, more skillful game, hopefully more high scoring game. So for a spectacle point of view, I think the summer is better, although it is probably a little bit harder for us players to be playing in. And then in terms of, um, I guess, audience, it's it's sort of a bit of a battle because at the moment we've got clear air and there's likely to have more people to be watching us given there's not much other sport competing with us. But at the same time, if you play double headers and you rock up at the MCG at 11 o'clock and the reserves play and then the women's play and then the men's games, it's a really great afternoon for sports fans. So um, it would, yeah, there's many different factors as to why I think either one would work and uh, probably a decision for not me to be making. <laughs> but it's nice to get your opinion on it, Lily, because I mean, we need to listen to the, those that play the game to get an understanding as to those that are actually involved in the middle of it, uh, what they think is best. Uh, it is interesting to me also, you're playing at venues like Darden Street and Moorabbin, uh, some suburban venues. I like the fact that footy's going back to the burbs, but I played at those venues like Victoria Park. So to me, I think there's, there's a beauty in going back to some of those places. I played a lot of my junior footy at Norwood Oval where you lost on the weekend, and that, that's one of the great venues of South Australian footy. And yet we do keep you away from, from Docklands and the MCG. So, yeah, it's interesting to, to hear an opinion as to whether you deserve to play more MCG and Docklands games and not have to play in the Burbs all the time. Yeah, it's, it's interesting too because I guess um, it's nice to play in a big stadium where you can sort of block out a bit of wind and pack out stadiums. But mm. I think at the moment when our crowds probably aren't as big as, you know, men's obviously, we're not going to pack out an MCG and have 70, 80, 90,000 people there. So you do lose atmosphere in those big venues where it becomes a bit vast with only sort of five to 10,000 people at each game. So I do like going back to more of those traditional grounds like Uvic Parks and your Witten Ovals and, and grounds like that that do have sentimental value for long-supporting fans. Um, Casey, we're building a great um, supporter, supporter base out there. Lots of locals um, follow the Ds very closely. It's become a real heartland hub for, for the Ds fans. Um, so I do like going back and sort of giving back and making footy accessible to, um, I guess, a wider proportion of the population and the community. Um, and I think it would be interesting to, you know, for a Carlton men's team to um, play at Icon Park, a Sunday afternoon game against a team, an interstate team like a GWS or something that we're not going to get a massive crowd and fill out the G and, and bring some men's games back to those grounds. I think it's great for the game. And um, for people like you that used to play there, I'm sure would love to go and watch your old side run around at grounds like Big Park and Witten Oval and Norwood, as you said. Yeah, they've got a soul, those grounds, and I'm sure you can probably feel it coming up from the turf. I mean, there's been a hundred years of other footballers' blood dropped on that same turf. It it does have something special about it, but so too does the MCG when you think of it that way. It's just, it seems like a family event, uh, the AFLW. I, there's so many men that go with, you know, their families and prams and, you know, rugs on the lawn. There's There's something beautiful about it that I just can't take my eyes off when I watch it, to be honest, Lily, just not the footy itself. Um, which is great. It's, it's just a whole atmosphere. Definitely. And I think um, that's the beauty of playing in these big grounds. With, um, you can sit up on the hill at, at Casey and there's lots of uh, family-friendly activations that the club's put on and um, it is just such a nice atmosphere to yeah, roll out your picnic rug and let the kids play around and um, just have a good time watching the footy. It's, it's a di- definitely a different atmosphere to uh, Friday Night Lights at the MCG. Um, hmm. which which I really like, and I think that's a major point of difference with the women's game. So the Gold Coast, you've got them coming up. Casey Fields, Saturday night, as you mentioned, they're just outside of finals contention, but they beat you, and they might jump a couple of spots uh, on the ladder and uh, they might, or might join you in third or fourth spot. Yeah, there are, we sort of had a little bit of a look at them last night at training, and 
Um, they're a very competitive, hardworking contest team, similar similar to the way we play. So um, contest battle will, will be high, and um, that's probably where the game's going to be won. But they're in some um, good form, and um, I'm really looking forward to, to playing them. We uh, went up to the Gold Coast last year, so looking forward to playing them on a big ground at Casey Field this weekend. Yeah, let's hope you get plenty of people there to watch that one Saturday night, Gold Coast, coming off uh, back-to-back wins. And as I mentioned, uh, I won't mention the war again, but Melbourne coming off that loss where they were kept to just three goals last week, Lily. Uh, good luck. It's always great to have a chat to you. Um, it's a delight to have you on. So let's hope we can get you on a little more. Thanks, mate. Nice to chat.